It's February 22nd, 2020. I'm Todd Dunn, and today's video is a test of the output of my solar panel array up on the roof of my house. And basically what I've done is yesterday I drew the batteries down, and today we're letting the sun recharge them. Now, in order for this test to uh, tell us the full output of the panels over the course of the entire day, I have to draw the panels down enough so that there's room in the batteries for the full output of the panels throughout the day. Unfortunately, while I thought I had done that yesterday by drawing my battery bank down by about two kilowatts, it turned out not to be enough. And my solar charge controller decided the batteries are getting very close to full charge just after 1.30 this afternoon and switched to absorption mode, which causes the voltage of the charging to stay the same, but gradually decreases the output from the solar panels. So, it has, as you'll see in a minute, it dropped off very rapidly when that happened. And consequently, we didn't get to see what the actual maximum output of the panels would have been after 1.30. So, I'm going to have to do this test again, and next time I'm going to have to be a little bit more bold and maybe draw the batteries down by, say, 3 kilowatts. Or if I wait until summer, maybe even 4 or 5 kilowatts. So I'm going to have to really pull them down in order to uh, get a full day's output from the panels into the batteries. Okay, what about this array? That's going to impact the output, the details of the array. This is a 1,020 watt array. Now, the peak of my roof, unfortunately, is oriented magnetic north-south. So that means that my panels are actually pointing a little bit south of west, and they are actually pointing at 252 degrees true. The array is sloped up 40 degrees from horizontal, which is just about optimum. It was fortunate that the people who built the house were thinking about my solar array 25 years ago when this house was built. But, as I said, the panels don't face south, and as a consequence, uh, early in the morning, there's very little light on the panels. It's only indirect light. There's no direct sunlight because, of course, the sun comes up in the east, which is on the far side of the house. Another factor, up there, you can see a chimney for my wood stove. Most of the time, like right now, that chimney does not cast a shadow on the solar panels. However, in the morning, at this time of year, from just after 9 o'clock until just before 10, it does cast a small shadow on the solar array, which reduces the array output, as you'll see when we look at array output versus time of day. Anyway. Let's take a look at the output of my solar array here on the coast of Maine in February 2020. I don't know if it shows up very well in the camera, but this, there is a kind of high haze. And uh, it's not completely clear blue sky, so that's going to cut down on insulation a little bit. And in addition to that, there have been a few small puffy clouds blowing through during the course of the day. So those are the conditions what we've had today. Okay, here's the data from today. I've plotted watts versus time of day, and I'm going to walk you through uh, this plot. This is solar array output versus the time of day. The inverter is not turned on, so there's no power coming out of the battery bank. Everything is going in. And my source for the uh, watts data was the display on my Victron 150 35 Smart Solar MPPT charge controller, which when the system is bulk charging, it will try to get the maximum amount it can out of the solar array. Anyway, what I did was I uh, 
started monitoring at 8 o'clock this morning, right after I had breakfast, and uh, started out and we had about 80 watts coming in, which was pretty good for 8 o'clock in the morning, considering that my solar array points west and uh, the sun comes up in the east. So basically it was just indirect light, but it was uh, fairly clear this morning and, and reasonably bright, so that wasn't really an issue. Uh, Output increased from 8 until 9 when it was about 120 watts, which was really a little surprising to me. I haven't seen it quite that high at 9 o'clock in the morning before, but that's what it got to. But then between 9 and 10, output started dropping off. So I went outside and took a look at the solar panel, and uh, lo and behold, my wood stove chimney was throwing a shadow onto the solar array, which is why the uh, output started dropping. And you can see on the plot here, I've got a little box that says uh, partial shadow. So that's why that happened. And basically, uh, right after nine o'clock, the shadow started touching the edge of the solar array. And as the uh, sun moved west, it sort of swept across the solar array and reached its maximum just before 10 o'clock and then rapidly uh, decreased as the, as the shadow completely moved off of the solar array. And then for the bulk of the rest of the day, the panels were unshaded. And you can see here that from around 10 o'clock to about uh, a little before 11, the output of the panels increased significantly. Then it appears to flatten out. Well, that's because a small cloud passed in front of the sun. And it was there for about, oh, 10, 15 minutes as it complete, before it completely passed across the sun. It's not very windy today, so the clouds weren't moving very fast. And that, you know, caused a sort of plateau in the solar panel output. But as soon as that cloud moved away, the output started increasing dramatically. And by noon, it was up to almost 500 watts. <clears throat> and it kept increasing until about 1.30 when it hit its maximum at 668 watts, which was really uh, pretty good. And it looked like it was still going up. And then, bam, you can see what happened. The array's output started dropping very dramatically. Now, why did that happen? Well, it happened because I didn't draw my batteries down far enough. And at about 1.35, the charge controller switched from bulk mode, where it was pulling the maximum power it could from the solar array, into absorption mode, where it just takes whatever power is needed to maintain the batteries at the absorption voltage, which in my case is about 28.8 volts for my 24 volt system. And as the batteries get closer to full charge, the amount of power required to hold the voltage at that, at that level drops off. And the charge controller adjusts the operating voltage of the solar array to cause the output to go down. And you can see it went down very rapidly from about 135 when it was right at 668 watts until about 240 it dropped down to about 75 watts. And at that point the uh, charge controller decided that the batteries were essentially fully charged and went into float mode. And you can see there's another slope change there in the solar uh, array output as it just gradually decreases down to uh, almost zero. At uh, five o'clock, the output was only 13 watts. So, and the reason for that is that uh, although it wasn't quite sunset yet, there is a small hill to the west of me, and it has trees on it, and at about oh, 4.15, the sun went below the tops of the trees, and the output just started dropping off again. It went down from where it had been holding relatively steady, around 50 watts or so, 
and just dropped down until at five o'clock it was practically nothing and I quit recording it. And in the next oh, 20 minutes after that, when I took a look at my phone to see what the output was, it had dropped down to only two or three watts as it got dark. So what would have happened if I had uh, not reached essentially nearly full charge on my batteries at about 135. Well, I think that the output would have kept going up for just a little bit longer because uh, given the orientation of my panels, the sun would have been most directly toward my panels at a little after two o'clock. So I, w I think I would have hit maximum output just a little bit after two o'clock. And then it would have started dropping until well, around a little bit before four when the sun went below the trees to the west. And uh, I probably would have gotten quite a bit more power out of my solar array than I did today. Now in the course of the day, my charge controller told me that uh, my total output was 2,300 watts, which is pretty good. And at the time that I hit float voltage, when the charge controller thought the batteries were fully charged, I had used about 2,210 watts. My batteries had been drawn down by about 2,000 watts, so that tells me that it took 2,210 watts to charge them up uh, to replace 2,000 watts that my charging efficiency is right around 90%, which is pretty good considering that I have lead acid batteries. And I'm you know, quite pleased with that. Maximum charge output from the panel into the batteries was about 22 amps, which is pretty good. I'm happy with that. And uh, I think I would have gotten over 700 watts if the batteries had had room for more charge. Now, why do I say that? Well, in the last week or so, when I've drawn the batteries down, and occasionally I've looked at the output and seen it peak very briefly, just over 700 watts. And that's why I think that probably would have hit it. Maybe not, because today there was some high haze in addition to a few puffy clouds that blew by earlier in the morning. And I think that haze was decreasing my solar panel output. So that's today's result. I really wish I'd been a little more bold and let the uh, inverter run all night to get the batteries drawn down a little bit more so that I had room to charge them for the whole day in uh, full sun. But I didn't. I wimped out and uh, you can see what happens when you look at the output there. So anyway, the important part about this is that they're always telling you when you have a solar array that your output in the winter is really going to be terrible. Well, it's winter here in Maine. I'm not down in Arizona. We have short days. The sun is low in the sky. And I still got two kilowatts today out of my two, one kilowatt array. And if there'd been room in my batteries, uh, I did a quick estimate. I think I would have gotten almost three kilowatts out of my solar array. And you know, I got 68% of the possible output as my maximum output, which is pretty good considering that it's February 22nd, and my panels faced west, not at the sun, and uh, they're not quite at a steep enough angle this time of year to uh, be properly oriented, even if they were facing directly at the sun. So, you know, I'm pretty pleased with the output that I got. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Okay, thanks for watching. If you uh, found this information useful or interesting or just weren't put to sleep by it, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this or content on Mount Desert Island or walking in Acadia National Park or sailing or 
cruising on my classic motor yacht or lots of other things that I do, why don't you subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so you will find out when my next video is ready for you to watch. Thanks for your time.